Can you believe it's 30 years since Spitting Image was first on our televisions? I can't believe that. It's extraordinary. Of course, it was hugely controversial in the 80s and 90s. Really, really funny. It was the show, though, that the politicians loved to hate. Sea slugs, you eat sea slugs. Oh, yes, that's all day. That's all day. But they're revolting and slimy and crawly. We don't eat this in England, you know. We have it presenting news at 10. <laughs> <laughs> Tasteless, degrading, and twisted, or totally hilarious. Spitting image divided the nation, but definitely got them talking. Now, the great thing about spitting image was look at what you've got here. You've got Bin Laden next to the Queen Mother. And Spitting Image could do that, you see. We could be very inventive. I think that Anne Whittacom would be a wonderful one. Oh, she's got such a great voice. Uh, but then, of course, you've got Ed Miliband with that very, very adenoidal voice. And uh, Cameron is just rather posh and uh, rather insistent on the way he speaks. So uh, they're all doable, you know, they're all doable. Maybe we wouldn't have quite as much fun, though. After all, we did live through Spitting Image. And we had Margaret Thatcher. Goodness me, we did. Well, at least I don't strut around in ludicrous little hats. Yes, but you'd love to, wouldn't you? It was the show that dared to go where others had feared to tread. And 30 years ago today, Spitting Image first splashed onto our screens. Its unique mix of Punch and Judy politics, raucous royal family ribbings and Mickey taking of showbiz stalwarts won it 10 BAFTA awards and two Emmys in its 12-year history. The puppets were created by art school friends Peter Fluck and Roger Law and ITV bosses gambled more than two and a half million pounds on the series being a hit. This was the very first sketch broadcast on Sunday, February the 26th, 1984. Good evening, boys. Good evening, Your Majesty. To mark the show's anniversary, the Cartoon Museum in London has an exhibition featuring some of the original puppets, as well as posters and other collectibles. The most famous latex creation was, of course, Tory Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Her voice came from actor and comedian Steve Nallon, who stunned the producer at his audition. So he asked me a question. I said, well, Mr Lloyd, it is very, very important in the history of satire to get a show out there. And he, he was a bit, you know, gobsmacked by this, so um, he then sort of gave me the job. Would you like to order, sir? Yes, I will have a steak. How do you like it? Oh, raw, please. And what about the vegetables? Oh, they'll have the same as me. That would be oh, absolutely thank you. Thank you. Back in 1984, this now semi-derelict building in the centre of Birmingham was ITV's Midlands Studios and directly above me at the top of a ramp was the scene and prop dock where the spitting image puppets were brought in from the workshop in London where they were made. Many of the puppeteers had never worked in television before spitting image which made life hard for the programme's director, a BAFTA award winning veteran of The Muppet Show. When you sort of said to them, you know, duck your head or do this or keep it lower and all that, it, they found very difficult because not only were they learning to puppeteer, they were learning to be, appear on television at the same time. I mean, it, it got easier as we went on, but I can remember the first show, how it got on air, I don't know, but it did. The public loved it, but the show's victims were split between those who hated their caricatures and those like Tory Health Minister Edwina Curry, who loved hers so much she eventually bought it. Well, most of the time I try not to look like her as I get older and she's got bits falling off, as you can see, um, that's becoming quite a struggle. But we do our best, don't we? And we keep the old brain ticking. That's something she doesn't have. Spitting Image had a number one chart hit in 1986 with the Chicken Song, but its 1987 election special version of Tomorrow Belongs to Me is probably its most evocative song. Three years later, Mrs Thatcher was ousted from office by John Major, so it turned out tomorrow didn't belong to her after all. In the history of political puppetry though, yesterday certainly did. Andy Bevan, ITV News. Tonight on Newsnight, there'll be none of your usual Bolshevik Broadcasting Corporation nonsense. Just rejoice. Rejoice at that news! Who the hell are you?
Also tonight, the Prime Minister. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him well. It's 30 years since Spitting Image began. Perpetrators and victims join us for a memorial service for television satire. Well, that's all for tonight. Uh, on tomorrow night's show, we'll be... Uh... I know what's on tomorrow night's show. The same left-wing Bolshevik nonsense that's on the BBC every night. Well, no more. Tomorrow belongs to me. We'll be talking privatisation. You'll be first, Jeremy. And, and, and who are all these people? Look at all this overmanning. Planning editor? What does she do? Oh, she can go. Barton McFarlane, he sounds like a communist. Who switched out the lights? Arthur Scargill? <laughs>